I get the feeling that you would love to strike out 27. Bam! Yeah, that would be fun. Wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't think there's ever been anybody who could say, I just do a no-hitter, but it wasn't even my best start of the week. <laughs> but you could. 583 with three homers, two doubles, and a triple. How, how could that be? And he should stay in the American <laughs> League. He's the guy that owns me. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs>
middle of the game and you know your offense goes crazy and they score you know, like six runs in the <laughs> middle of the inning and you kind of you know as a pitch I found where you kind of get caught up in that you know you get high five and watching their videos in between you know and really <laughs> kind of get distracted by you know the good offense you know the whole team's having a great time <laughs> Not and you. the thing is when I when I've let myself uh you know kind of mentally you know down and kind of you know you know enjoy their offense and not worry about you know my job of pitching that the next time I've always gone back out there I mean I've always given up a two spot or three spot and uh, you know just like that the game flips back into being a blowout until well we're back in the baseball and so it, it can happen just like that the moment you just turn that light switch off like you just lose that command you, you fall behind counts and uh, I just learned over the years that under no circumstances can you turn that. You've got to stay completely, uh, you know, full tilt the whole time. Uh, so then, so what's the reference? The the C on the other side is that, is that from Lost? No, it, it was uh, really J Dub, Jason Worth. Him just, you know, it sounds like him. You know, I make fun of him a lot, and then he makes fun of me a lot. Really? <laughs> yeah. Imagine so. that. <laughs> it was one so. of those things where. He, uh, I think he, he somehow said it was like, you know, you saw me putting the head, because before the game, before I put the head, headphones on, like I'm the same guy. I'm laughing, joking, making fun of everybody. So it, it, nothing changed. In it. <laughs> and then obviously once I put the headphones, you know, like, you know, once they get in the game mode, then like there's no more laughing about anything. Right. And so uh, I think he even, he was the one that first said it. Like, oh, so it's his line. It's probably his line. And then. <laughs> I kind of, you know, once he made fun of me enough, then I was like, all right, let's just, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's just go with it. Let's go with that. When I watch you, I get the feeling that you would love to strike out 27. All 27 <laughs> out, bam. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Max Scherzer has done it again. So you don't think that was as dominating as those other two games? No, it was. Uh, it just seemed that you know I caught the the nightcap of a doubleheader when in, in New York it had been warm and then all of a sudden it got freezing cold. Uh, I know hitters pitcher, you know, like hitters when it gets <laughs> down to thirties and on a <laughs> night of a doubleheader, you, everybody's kind of emotions kind of drop and. Uh, you know, I just got out there and, you know, it was the last start for me of the year. Um, you know, the Mets had, gone, or had already clinched for the playoffs. We were out of it. <laughs> and so the game, you know, really didn't mean much uh, in terms of the significance um, of the outcome. But it did to you. It did to me just because, I, you know, you know, they went to the playoffs and they even went to the World Series. So, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, I'm not taking anything away from them. They, they played great that year. Um, but it's one of those things that you just want to send them off a little bad taste in their mouth. <laughs> well, that was accomplished. <laughs> and so, um, you know, even though we were out of it, I, you know, I just wanted to, you know, finish my season strong. Well, then that next year you had the 20 strikeout game. And I, I know I, I kidded you about you might strike out 27 any night, but I, when I watch you, I get the feeling that you would love to strike out 27. All 27 <laughs> outs, bam. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> is that doable? Um, no, it's not doable. It's, it can't be done, huh? It's not doable. Baseball is a sport where people think you're not supposed to show that kind of emotion, right? There's a lot of thought like that. Did you not get that memo? Well, I think there's a difference between playing with emotions versus being emotional. And, you know, having choreographed, you know, celebrations um, you know, on the field, I think is what everybody kind of gets, uh, everybody's hair, you know, on the back of their neck, <laughs> you know, everybody gets a little ticked off when you, right. you, you, when you start seeing, you know, the choreograph, and, you know, celebrations and it's all about me, you know, and you're, you're letting your emotions be the best, uh, trying to be almost in a selfish way. And I think that's what rubs everybody raw. But I think at the same, but in the other way that, I think everybody doesn't matter who you are. If there's a big moment in the game and there's and you do something great and there's an outburst of emotion from either side, everybody loves that. You know, I don't think right. there's anything wrong with that in sports and baseball. Um, as long as, as long as it's not you know premeditated that you're trying to, hey, as soon as I get a hit, I'm gonna flip my bat or you know do I have some some type of uh, you know way for the camera <laughs> no. to get to me to make I, sure I get that it. I see it. I think if you just let the nature of the game dictate your emotion. Um, everybody enjoys it. I, I agree. I think baseball players should be allowed to show that kind of emotion. And can you use emotion for fuel? Because it sure seems like you do. Oh yeah, you definitely can. Because uh, it hits that adrenaline. As soon as that adrenaline hits, uh, it almost feeds itself. So uh, that's where. In you, but that can be a negative. Uh, it has been in my in the past where you almost get too much adrenaline, too emotional, and uh, you're not thinking clearly. A bullet, fair ball down the line. Here comes Ben Zobrist, and the Cubs have taken the lead off Max Scherzer. The game's going to rev you all the way up, uh, but you still have to have your mind in front of your body. Uh, you know, you still have to be thinking through every situation and thinking, um, you know, what's going to be best in this scenario, not just, you know, the testosterone just running. I'm just going to try to throw as hard as I can. All right. Well, let me ask you about that. I think it was. Thomas Boswell, who observed once that Max is the perfect name for you because you're max effort all the time. I mean, no one is more max effort than Max Scherzer. And I mean, it's an awesome thing to watch. Um, but I'm going to guess that somewhere along the line, uh, people have told you you need to dial it back. Hey, the Diamondbacks traded you nine years ago, mm -hmm. right? Thinking that you're going to break down and you're still going, averaging 200 five innings a year. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to take away the effort. Um, you know, for me, that, 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 that the effort comes as a byproduct of just, you know, how, what you do off the field, um, in the weight room, uh, of making sure that your body's ready to be able to go out there and compete as hard as you can. And, I, you know, the thing is, I'm not always throwing every single pitch as hard as I can. Um, I just think it's sometimes my mechanics make it look that way. And it's just the way I go about my business and right. the way uh, I deliver the baseball. 583 with three homers, two doubles, and a triple. How, how could that be? And he, he should stay in the American <laughs> League. He's the guy that owns me. 
Don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry Wood, Roger Clemens, and now Max Scherzer are the only pitchers in the history of this game to ban 20 in a game. Let me ask you about last year. Uh, last year was, um, was amazing, right? Because just think about all the stuff that happened to you. You had your broken knuckle you started the season with. I can, I can remember at least two line drives that you got drilled with. Uh, you had the hamstring. You had the like the pillow neck thing. <laughs> you had the the shoulder. We can get to that in a second. But I guess my point is, all that stuff happened to you. You still won a Cy Young. You still pitched 200 innings. You had the lowest ERA of your career. How is that possible in a year when all that stuff happened to you? Then you know we'll start with a stupid one first, and then the neck thing. That was just me. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've dealt with different, you know, everybody, every pitcher deals with ailments uh, across their body and it's more how you deal with them and how you train out of them. Is it um, mindset? Physical? Uh, well, for this specific, specific one, yeah, I had, you know, my neck had been kind of bothering me over the you know, past couple of months, but I, I know if I did, um, and I had dealt with it in the past over a couple of years where this, it was just an ailment that if I just did my neck exercises, I strengthened it and got out of it. Uh -huh. I just had gotten in a bad routine of not quite doing all those exercises. Wow. So that's Cy Young. Was that a tribute to mental toughness, physical toughness, or both? Well, the win of Cy Young, it, it takes a team effort. Um, no individual has ever won a Cy Young just because of what they do. I feel like it takes a you know, culmination of everybody. I mean, um, I'm in a position because of where I'm at in this organization that, you know, teammates obviously went there and played well behind me. You know, the catchers, both, you know, Lobie and Weeders, and then the train staff. So, you know, for us, you know, to win that award, that was a team thing, not necessarily an individual thing. All right, can I ask you about the home run? I mean, that yeah. was one of those good news, bad news <laughs> nights. And pulls one to deep left field. Max Scherzer, his first major league home run. It's your first career homer, and you never threw another pitch. Yeah. <laughs> right? So what, what exactly went on there? Well, I was warming up, and I, you know, I could feel my neck really was in a not a good but, spot. I did you know, well, hold on. Hold on. Did you know it when you when you hit the home run? Did you oh, know yeah. you did something? Well, I mean, the carry walked down there, so I pitched that first inning. I could tell my neck was actually going downhill, and I didn't. Even, I was pretty much going to come out of the game um, after that first inning. Um, you know. Oh, you knew that. I, I pretty much knew that. that oh, okay. I, I had, this was, you know, I was going to try to one more my pitch, and you know, I really knew I really shouldn't be out there again because I was really going to be putting the team in jeopardy. What happened was is that it was the first inning and we had gotten a bunch of hits and we scored, you know, had scored some runs and it was, you know, first and second and my spot came up in the first. And so they didn't want to use a pinch hitter and, you know, my neck was all jacked up and, um, you know, I was like, all right, well, at least you know, I can go up there and swing and just try to bunt, um, bunt somebody over. And I got, you know, missed two bunts and, um, you know, they put the slash on and I was like, you know, like, what the heck's going to happen here? And so, uh, fortunately enough, I think the neck injury allowed me when I slashed to actually keep my head on the ball. <laughs> I couldn't move <laughs> no I couldn't, I couldn't my neck. So Don't I, try that at home. I couldn't pull off anymore. So finally, I kept my neck, my, my head on the ball, and I hit, threw a one a million swing on it and hit a home run. I, was, I couldn't believe it. You get ahead, three one in the count. There's the chocolate sauce yet again. I know you're also a uh, famous prankster. <laughs> What's the greatest prank of your career, do you think? I don't know. To be seen. I got one in the works. You do? Yeah. So it hasn't even happened yet? It hasn't. Yet. You're going to have to cut this out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be one coming. So it, it, like it's going to make chocolate syrup just pale in comparison? Oh, yeah. It should. Really? You want the story on that one? Well, yeah, but just to familiarize people, like, you know, most of the time, most teams, Guys have a big night, they get Gatorade or ice or something poured on them. This guy poured chocolate sauce <laughs> on actual human beings. <laughs> so yeah. what happened there? So what happened there? So we're down, we're in Atlanta, and we're losing 9-1. to one. Um, And somehow in the, like the sixth inning, we start making an unreal comeback. And we come back all the way, it, you know, it's like we're down 12-10. to 10 And... Uh, Dan Ugla hits like a two-run or three-run jack to put us ahead, 13 to 12. Swing and a long drive. 
drive, deep left field, way back, going, going, and long gone! It's the win of the year and one for the Nationals history books. We came back, won this game, a miracle game, and so um, I remember trying to go in there and like, oh, this guy, you know, you have to get the whipped cream and get him in the face. <laughs> so I run into the clubhouse, go into the fridge, I can't find any whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> like there's nothing in there, like there's no, like, there's no Cool Whip or anything like that. No, no whipped cream. And so, you know, when you're, I'm just panicking, like, what am I going to get? What am I going to grab? What can I, you know, get with? And it, the only thing that was, the, the big enough thing that was there was the chocolate syrup. So I just grabbed the chocolate syrup. I see him in an interview, and I, I, get, I get him with chocolate syrup. So. He fell behind 0-2. Oh, chocolate sauce there from Maxi. That'll taste good. It was one of those things that, you know, that's just how it happened. It happened organically, and it, it you know, it was, everybody loved it. <laughs> Dan, he comes in, he's licking it. He's like, that was actually good. We have more of that. And I was like, you get more of you know, in our walk-off. So right. obviously that's how that happened. And then sure enough, we have another walk-off, and it was like, well, we're going to use chocolate syrup. And so, <laughs> I, you know. Uh, I was, I was going to ask you your, uh, hit this, your hitter that you hate to face, but looking at the stats, it was pretty obvious. And a ball drilled to left center. And Shin Su Chu has done it to the Nats again. Shin Su Chu, 583 with three homers, two doubles, and a triple. How, how could that be? And he, he should stay in the American <laughs> League. That's, that's great. We don't need to him. There, right? I, I'm done with I, He's the guy that owns me. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you like everybody. I, I like you. everybody, but, but man, he, he has really got my number. All right, let, okay, let, 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 let's do one more now. Um, I know you're a guy, you're always looking for ways to get better. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for you to have a better year than you had in 2017? You won a Cy Young. Yes. Okay. Yes. I was going to give you some numbers here, but go ahead. How is it possible? I can, I can continue to pitch and execute pitches in a, a, in a different way. Uh, I can continue to put, improve and make, make pitches sharper and uh, identify the situations when I know how to attack hitters in a little bit better way. So. Um, that's a challenge of 2018 for me is to continue to find a way to uh, keep evolving as a pitcher. All right. Well, you've won two Cy Youngs in a row. The, the complete list of pitchers who have won three in a row is Greg Maddox, Randy Johnson. If you went up on a list with those two guys, you wouldn't complain, right? Just checking. Well, it just it just <laughs> doesn't even hit my my radar right now, just Got because it. we have a whole season. We have 160 <laughs> ball games before we can even uh, think about that. All right. Well. Look. As I mentioned, look forward to watching every time you take the mats. So Max, Appreciate it. thanks for joining us, man. All right, thanks, Jason.